हेलो एंड वेलकम टू माय यूट्यूब चैनल एज आई हैड प्रॉमिस यू दैट इन द थर्ड आफ्टर द थर्ड पार्ट ऑफ विलियम वर्ट्स दैट इन द नेक्स्ट वीडियो आई विल एक्सप्लेन द डिफरेंट पोएम्स ऑफ विलियम वर्ट्स सो हियर आई एम गोइंग टू प्रजेंट बिफोर यू अ क्रिटिकल अप्रिशिएशन एंड एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ one of his greatest poems and very world famous poem the daffodils it has always been prescribed in all the syllabus whatever board it may be so now daffodils is one of the greatest poems of uh, william wordsworth let me recite the whole poem first I wandered lonely as a cloud that floats on high over wells and hills when all at once I saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees fluttering and dancing in the breeze continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way they stretched in never ending line along the margin of a bay 10000 saw i at a glance tossing their heads in a sprightly dance the webs beside them danced but they out did the sparkling webs in glee a poet could not but be gay in such a jocund company i gazed and gazed but little thought what wealth the show to me had brought these are the three stanzas here it is based on four stanzas after explaining all these three stanzas i will again write the fourth one and explain and recite that particular fourth stanza also now let us come to the explanation of these first lines originally william wordsworth was walking somewhere along with his sister drothy wordsworth and he happened to see thousands and thousands of daffodils so after returning from there he sat in his home and composed this marvelous immortal poem as i had told you in my romanticism chapter also and as a great poet also that it was the characteristic of william wordsworth he himself has defined poetry that poetry is a spontaneous overflow of a powerful expression recollected in peace and tranquility so after enjoying the thousands of flowers when he returned home and he composed this nice immortal poem i wander lonely as a cloud that floats on high over wells and hills the poet is telling that he was wandering here and there wander means roaming here and there walking here and there having no aims and he is comparing his loneliness with the clouds that floats in the sky over the hills and you might have seen that the small patches of cloud floats in the sky on the mercy of the wind from this city to that city so the poet is comparing his uh, loneliness with the loneliness of the cloud it is not suitable right now to explain all the vocabulary and the figure of speech is uh, used in this poem i will take an another class and in that i will uh, explain the words and the figure of his speech used in this poem so i wandered lonely as a cloud that floats high over wells and hills when all at once accidentally by chance i saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils you must remember that for flowers the grouping word is bunch of flowers rather than crowd of flowers crowd of people it is but 
crowd of flowers is that is never bunch of grapes bunch of keys bunch of flower this is the collective word but he is personifying the daffodils he is personifying the daffodils as if daffodils were some host and host word it means when you are going to somewhere someone's house you are the guest and the person the house where you had gone is host of you so he is personifying the flowers as they were a host a host of this poet great daffodils uh, so i saw a crowd a host of golden daffodils beside the lake beneath the trees they were beside the lakes the springs that were were flowing and under the trees whatever trees were there he saw fluttering and dancing in the breeze they were just moving here and there waving their heads and this and that like that fluttering in the wind in the wind they were fluttering in the wind now continuous as the stars that shine and twinkle on the milky way here again this figure of space simile is coming which i will explain in my later uh, uh, video what are these uh, figures of speech all about so he is comparing the the multitude of uh, the crowd of the flowers with the stars that shine in the sky if you look into the sky you will find countless of stars are there innumerable stars are there and they are shi shining here and there and if you look into the sky wherever your eyes go go i you find the stars twinkling in the milky way similarly he is comparing the crowd of daffodils with the stars innumerable stars in the sky they stretch in never ending line never ending line means wherever the eyes of the poet is going on he is finding everywhere everywhere and where at each and every place he finds uh, the daffodils along the margin of a bay wherever his eyes either on the margin of the bay under the tree or the uh, lakes and uh, fountains uh, flowing here and there and their multitudinous he compares with the star there are innumerable uh, daffodils there as innumerable stars are there uh, shining in the sky 10000 sai at a glance he is just in all in this uh, this second stanza he is just giving a vivid picture of thousands and thousands of daffodils he did not saw a few pots of flower he few flowers daffodil flowers in some pots he saw 10000s wherever i had a glance of it i am look throwing his eyes he is signing he is finding there is a there is the daffodils tossing their heads in splendid dance this is a very nice uh, depiction in romanticism this is the i told you in my third um, Uh, video that emotion and imagination plays a very important role tossing their head in spandy dance if you go in some village and you are standing in a field mustard mustard field the yellow cloud colors is spreading here and there and when the wind blows they toss their heads to one another so this is what the poet is depicting the picture that they are tossing their head they are they are just is tossing their heads in a sprightly dance that they are dancing in the breeze in the wind the waves beside them dance the waves of the the rivers the lakes the springs that they are also dancing the waves of the river is also dancing but the dance of the the, the sprightly dance of the daffodils is out outdid has outdid it outdid the webs webs uh, webs dancing means it is surpassing the the dance of the daffodils surpasses the webs of the rivers 
Once again, I repeat the sentence. Try to understand. The dance of the daffodils, flowers, surpasses, surpasses the waves of the rivers. They are also dancing. They are also making sound. They are very catching eyes also. But it is outdid, surpassing. They are surpassing them. So, the poet is telling, a poet could not but be gay. Now, you see, up to here, the emotion and imagination part is at the height of, at a very height, at its climax. Now, it is also the quality of the romantic poets. One of the greatest qualities of romantic poet is that they create a world of their own. They create a world of their own with the high power of emotion and Im imaginative intensity. They enjoy their, but they enjoy their, but they do not leave the earth. They are very realistic poet. They do not leave the earth. So now the tempo of the poet's imagination, you must be, must be observing that now coming down. All these, is, these are happenings, but what should I do? What the poet should have to do? A poet could not but be gay. Gay means happy. In such a jocund company, in such a joyous company, in such a happy company, in such a com hilarious company, in such a company which is full of joy, happiness, happiness, glee, all kinds of uh, joy is there, bliss is there, and blessing is there, the, bl the blessing of uh, nature is there. So, the poet is having, or rather satiated joy. So now the poet is coming from that height of uh, imagination to the real world. He is telling, I gazed and gazed but little thought. I gazed and gazed, I looked and looked, I stared and stared. And, but now the poet is coming to himself. What wealth the show to me had brought. It has brought an immense wealth of joy to me. This scene of uh, daffodils, the dancing of the daffodils, the fluttering of the daffodils, the smiling of the daffodils, the waves, dancing of the waves, all have given him immense wealth of joy. And this is the quality of romantic age poet that they go deep down into the nature. They enjoy the nature wholeheartedly. So, my dear, uh, so here is the fourth stanza, the last stanza of this poem. For oft when on my coach I lie in vacant or in pensive mood, they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude and then my heart with pleasure fills and dances with the daffodils. Till third stanza, you might have observed that the poet is enjoying the dancing daffodils, the flattering daffodils, the shining daffodils, the a sprightly dance of the daffodils. Now, this is the quality of the romantic age poet that they create a world of their own, enjoy it, but they have some, they are very realistic poet and they have realistic quality. That is why they come to their senses and come on the earth and he is telling. For oft, it is, it is actually O-F-T-E-N, often, which in the poem is written in short form oft. When on my coach I lie, the poet is telling that whenever I am lying in my bed or in my coach or not sitting on my chair, either in vacant or empty mind, I do not have any idea, I do not have anything to, uh, uh, th any thought in my mind, just I am sitting on my coach, on my chair, on my bed, wherever I am in vacant mood, in empty mood, or in pensive mood, in melancholy mood, in pain, anguish, in some worry, anxiety, either in 
empty my mind is empty of every thought or i am suffering from some melancholy some worry some anxiety some depression some perplexity then they flash upon that inward eye this scene of the daffodils the fluttering dancing shining daffodils the scene flash upon my inward eye this is the eye which we are looking at each other but there is an another eye the eye of spirit the eye of heart the eye of mind they come to my inward eye that eye of spirit that eye of heart that eye of mind they flash upon that inward eye which is the bliss of solitude it is a blessing of solitude solitude means loneliness when you are all alone sitting nobody is there with you you are there and your thoughts are there your remembrances are there your everything is there and you are sitting all alone so solitude means loneliness so the poet is talking that either in vacant mood or in pensive mood or in solitude this is a bliss for me this is a blessing for me this is a moment of joy for me that i think of that fluttering daffodils i think of those shining daffodils i think of those smiling daffodils and they gave me some sort of solace some sort of blessing some sort of happiness and then my heart with pleasure fills and the poet's heart is filled with pleasure filled with joy filled with happiness and danced with the day my mind also goes on dancing with those fluttering dancing daffodils so this is what the realistic approach of this uh, uh, these poets of romantic age i would like to summarize the whole thing in hindi also ke aap agar gaon mein jaye सरसों के खेत में अपने को थोड़े देर के लिए खड़ा करें जहाँ सरसों बोया हुआ है तो आप देखेंगे कि इस खेत से उस खेत तक दूर तक पीले पीले सरसों झूम रहे हैं लहरा रहे हैं और सब हवाओं के झोंकों से उनके ऊपर का फूल पीला वाला एक दूसरे से टकराता है तो वो सीन कितना खूबसूरत रहता है वो सीन वो खेत कितना अच्छा लगता है सेम चीज़ यहाँ पर पोइट ने डिपिक्ट किया है पिक्चराइज किया है एक पोइट जिस तरह से एक पेंटर ब्रश और पेंट से पेंट करता है एक पोइट कलम से या उनके वर्ड से पेंटिंग कर देता है तो कितनी अच्छी पेंटिंग है कि डेफोडिल्स हज़ारों की तादाद में पोइट को मिलते हैं खुशी में झूमते हुए डांस कर रहे हैं और इस तरह से पोइट उनको इंजॉय करके अपने आप में बहुत खुश होता है सो दिस इज़ वाट ऑल अबाउट डेफोडिल्स आई होप this much is quite sufficient so far as the appreciation part of this great poem is concerned in my next video i would like to um, explain the vocabulary used in this poem and the figure of his speech used in this poem there are certain figures of his speech i am not going to explain right now because the video will be at at least a little longer i will take an another class on this and explain the vocabulary part and the figure of his speech simile metaphor personification alliteration assonance these are the figures of his speech you must know as a student of literature so wait for that video till then i so till then i request you all to like subscribe my channel thank you so much indeed